Hi, um, I've been working on a temperature controller set up for my um, fermentation chamber for beer making. And I wasn't able to find any really good uh, tutorials on how to take one of these PID um, uh, temperature controllers and set it up for both heating and cooling. There were plenty of them that were set up for um, heating alone, turning on when a temperature hit a certain point for either brewing or for um, other, you know, functions. People use them for different things. But I, what I wanted was I wanted, I have a big chest freezer. I wanted to turn it on when it got too cold. Um, I turn it on when it got too warm and turn on a heating element when it got too cold because it's, I'm in Southern California and we're pretty mild in our winter, but uh, I wanted to be able to take a, uh, an old aquarium heater here and uh, put it in there and help it heat my space you know when it gets to be below 50 degrees for a couple of weeks and I want the uh, the temperature to uh, want the beer to ferment at 50, 68 degrees I need some heating element in there and I've had a problem so anyway I wanted to do it this is a um, PID temperature controller by my pin it's a TA7 um, TA7 SNR SM, look at it, my, my sheet here. TA7SNR. And um, so it's a, a large size PID temperature controller. I have a housing for it. This is a four inch, um, four inch housing by six inch housing. I picked this one up at Home Depot. Um, I have a larger one for my other temp controller that, that uh, was also from Home Depot. These actually work really good. They're like conduit boxes. Or, I don't know what they are. They work really well. Um, so what I've done here is I've taken the top of the box I've uh, cut a hole in it using my Dremel. There's my Dremel. My, well, it's not real Dremel. It's a cheap Dremel mounted on my, my workspace here. And uh, I cut out the hole, filed it nice, and mounted this in there. They mount real nicely. They have these, these nice clips on them, so it works real well. The kit I bought was from uh, eBay, but I see them sold a lot of places. It came with the PID temperature controller, this uh, PT100, PT1000, PP sensor and uh, uh, SSR that should be plenty to run my freezer now this device is fully capable of it has it has um, dual alarms and the out one single output for the SSR so what happens is back, I have it's a little hard to see I guess the uh, the target for this video is the target demographic would be people who are not real electrically inclined. I'm only mildly electrically inclined, so that's even being generous. So I'll walk through it in kind of a basic manner. Over here, I have the um, the uh, the temperature sensor hooked in. This is how it hooks in appropriately. Um, with my first temp controller, it took us a lot of trial and error to get this figured out. Red gets jumped to the first two, and then we have. Um, yellow and then green down here in the fourth pin. Um, over here we have the two inputs. These are the power inputs. So that's 110 volt power input. So that's coming in from my, um, I got all these cables around here, from my plug. So this is, this is power coming in from the wall. Um, this second one is power coming in from the wall. This is AC power coming in right now. Um, pin three and four are the um, alarm one. And then down here, pin. What is this? In my spec sheet. Pin seven and nine are for the, um, uh, the power of the SSR. Oops, sorry. So that's the output right there. So we have power input. We have um, alarm one. We have output. Those two. And then we have the sensor here to set up. So. Um, so this is power in over here. This is a relay. It has a built-in relay that runs up to 3 amps and a bunch of volts AC. So it's enough to run a heating element, but not enough to run the whole freezer. So to run the whole freezer, you've got to use the output and run it through um, a, a solid-state relay over there. So that's the real basics of it. Um, it goes through this mess of wires that... Oh, something's not grounded. Um... So I have two output cables here. This output 
goes to the left. This is this one's for the freezer, and that's hooked up to that lamp there. Um, this output here is simulating what my heating element would be, and that's hooked up to this lamp there. Um, the real hard part about this whole setup isn't so much the wiring. The wiring's pretty straightforward. What's hard is the configuration in the device. Let me power it up and show you what, I, what my settings are. Um, so it'll go through its self-test. I have it set to Fahrenheit because I'm in North America. Um, current ambient temperature, it's probably close. I haven't calibrated it yet. 55 degrees, it's a little chilly. I have it set to 60 degrees right here. And you can see because it's 60 degrees and uh, I have it set to 60, it says 55, so that's too cool, so it needs to warm up. So that lamp came on. If I go and I set this to... This one. I set this to 50 degrees. The other one goes on, and that one goes off. Great, so it's all set up and functioning appropriately. Let me go into the settings here and uh, show you how things are set up. If you hold down the set button for three seconds, it'll pop you into the programming mode. Uh, my alarm one is set to two. Now it doesn't say anything on the instructions here. Instructions say, Alarm 1, you put this setting, it just says alarm setting, range negative 1,099 to a lot. So I have it set to 2, and this is a degrees. So this is 2 degrees from the set temperature, it will trigger the alarm. Now, oops, 1, 2, 3 here. Um, now this is where you really set, this is the alarm mode, I don't even know how to pronounce that, it's A1 something. So I have it set to 1, and that's deviation low alarm, and what that does is it'll allow it to trigger the other um, alarm 1 when it is above the target temperature by the set amount. So if it's above the target temperature by 2 degrees, it'll trigger it. It makes it the opposite of what the uh, output is. Um, as far as the output's concerned, I should talk less and show settings more. Um, alarm 2, I'm not using. Um, PUF, I'm not sure what this is. I think this is the display value range. I think this is where you calibrate. Uh, I haven't calibrated yet, so I, I haven't done that. PT, this is the uh, type of temperature sensor. I'm using a PT100 sensor, so I set this to PT. Um, P here is proportional band. Uh, I set it to off. Um, L, I guess it gets L is, oh, I, integrated time range. I think this is how, I don't know what this is. I set it to 20. D is proportional band percentage range. I turned it off. Um, this is the output control mode. Um, so what happens? Are you looking for cooling? Are you looking for heating? Um, I'm looking for cooling, so I set it to cool can be set to heat or cool um this is the uh they call it hysteresis 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 range and this is how i don't know what it does i turned it put it on zero uh ctl this is the output control mode they call it i put it at one um and when you have it at that it does the ssr it's to, that's to set it to do ssr for the output trl which is low uh, low analog output I don't know, let's put it at zero. TRH, high analog output. I think I left that one. Uh, it's at 100. Uh, what kind of temper, how, how we want this thing to function. BSL, um, PID. I don't know. I don't remember exactly what that is. Uh, Celsius or Fahrenheit. Uh, this one is um, parameter lock code. I guess you can. Uh, battery bad had to change so you can see the uh, whoop, temperature dropped a little bit it's now 47 in here it's very chilly um, there's one other area so that was all the settings for the main setting area but there's a secondary setting area that you use for different stuff the in non-automatic state I don't know what it means but what you do is you press the up and the down arrows at the same time for three seconds or five seconds or something and it'll pop you into this other mode where you got to make a couple of changes here i think i don't remember exactly but i think this is the area where you turn off the brain it had some 
um, some of the PID features that make it kind of flick on and off, flick, flick on and off to slowly bring temperatures into position. You don't want that when you have a compressor running. You want to run the compressor for a period of time and then shut it off. So, um, so we dis so I disabled some of the stuff here. Let me go back in here and I'll show you what I have set here. So again, you press those for the five seconds. Um, so this LSP limit, low limit value. I don't know what that is. I don't think I adjusted that one. Uh, mine's set to one, negative 199. USP up limit value. I don't know what the default is. I don't think I touched that one. Is it? This is the um, this is the setting where you tell it how close to the target temperature you want it to keep before it kicks on the cooling. So this is set to two degrees. So if it's within two degrees, goes two degrees high of my target temperature, it'll kick on the compressor. And I set both of those to two. Um, one of them's for alarm one. One of them's for alarm two. DP is decimal point setting. I don't know what that one's for. And password setting. I don't I haven't set that. So 15 is factory setting. So those are the the total uh, settings that I have set on here. Now um, I'm going to drill some holes in this. Get the wire cables coming out of it. Get everything all mounted and uh, a little tension something so they don't get pulled out. <laughs> figure out what's up with this loose ground and um, get it all together and set up. Okay, so I uh, finished boring some holes and assembled this whole thing. You can see cables coming out that side. This is power. I just labeled it on here. It's a little hackney for now. Input, this is cooling, this is heating. I think I need to mount it down. Out of this side comes the uh, the temperature sensor. Oop, sorry. After that side comes the temperature sensor. Here's my old one. It's a bigger box. It's actually the same PID. So I might retrofit that one and add the heating element to that one. That one's just cooling. I got my two freezers here now. You can see the temperature. This one's over here loggering. And this one actually I'm going to use for uh, for service. So I'll have all my kegs in here to uh, serve beer out of. This is a Maltos Falcons uh, Scottish Scottish Strong Ale, and this is a, a Belgian that I'm uh, I'm lagering right now. I don't know how that one will turn out. It's too cold, so I didn't get a good heat. And uh, in here, you can see the temperature probe coming down, and it's just it's just sitting in the bottom right now. I'm going to tape it onto this carboy here. This is my uh, oatmeal cream stout from yesterday. And uh, for a heating element for now, I just put a lamp. I don't know if, uh, I know light affects beer. I'm not sure if lamp light affects beer, but uh, I don't want it bright in here. So I did that for now. I have a couple other ideas I've Googled around for little space heaters or a, uh, my aquarium heater thing. I didn't want to add additional moisture in here. So I think, um, some kind of dry heating elements probably best but that's it for now um bubbling away so uh up here's the controller and it's all set and uh i'm gonna keep an eye on it for the first couple of days here see if my settings hold i did notice that when the heating element goes on it heats all the way up to my target tip so it's gonna heat all the way up till it's 68 degrees and then it's going then immediately the compressor is going to kick on to bring it down so it's going to try and keep it in the the two degrees cooler than that so it set at 68 I should probably set it at 70 and then that'll bounce it around between 68 and 70 in fact I'll do that 70 degrees and it's that easy to set so it's pretty cool there's that one there Anyway, I hope this, uh, this was helpful to you. If you have any questions, uh, ask them in the comments below.